Did you like your experience on Drag Race? I had I had a lot of fun on Drag Race because there were no stakes for me. I wasn't trying to win, and I was just trying to go and fuck shit up and make a name for myself and get screen time. And Correct. I did that. I checked off that box. So uh, you get disqualified. It becomes the talking round of everywhere. Like I literally think you being disqualified gave you a bigger name for yourself than if you would have won the season. Yeah. Um, and then you're on the reunion. And there's the conjugal visit type thing of what did Willem do? Mm -hmm. That conjugal thing was made up. So what was what did Willem do? What did Willem do? Here's the thing, they knew everything that I did because as I was breaking the rules, I was telling them, trying to get kicked off. We gave them money to get us stuff at, a st at stores. They didn't, they weren't feeding us right. They were giving us like literally six, seven, $75 for 12 people to eat that makes like 675 per person or something at like 10 30 at night they didn't know our names they called latrice la something this white devil bitch so i was like bitch they're racist and once i told latrice and got chad going we stood up for ourselves and we were like you need to know our names and then i was like heather what's her name and she's like i don't i don't know and, oh, oh. and i started barking at her for no reason and i didn't know why but i scared her and she backed out of the room and i felt so proud i was like you will not make money off us drag queens being gay men yourselves and fag hags and not know our fucking names. You won't, especially since or hanging around your neck, you have one side that has our boy pictures in our name and one side that has our girl pictures in our name. You do not call Latrice La something. Yeah. So I had it with them at that point, but um, so I broke those rules with going to the store and getting stuff, but I brought other girls so they couldn't kick us all off. Um, I stole, I, um, what else did I do? I got everybody high and drunk all the time. Um, I tried to take feather fans, I tried to take RuPaul's Iron Fist shoes that were there. Um, and then after that, I broke the biggest reality rule there is on the last day of production. They were, so between when I was kicked off and the last day of production, I went to New York and did a show for a week and a half mm -hmm. in the Fringe Festival. I thought it was gonna transfer to Broadway. That's why I was like, I'm gonna leave Drag Race to, you know, go do this show, get on Broadway, blah, blah, blah. It didn't transfer. It won the audience award. It was Jersey Shore's a call. Two of the girls from Glow are on it. Danny Francesi wrote it, Hannah Lopatin. Um, it's a great show. Um, but when I got back, I was like, all right, well, show's wrapping. Everybody's going out tonight to Mickey's because I knew a couple of the people. Um, so I went out and they had like bleachers set up at Mickey's. They knew there would be so many people. And me and this one producer were sitting there and um, he was the producer of Untucked. Mm -hmm. And there was another producer of Untucked too named um, Jen, who I really enjoyed, who they were doing something during the second episode of Untucked, which I didn't approve of. It was like emotional manipulation of Jiggly on the day her mom died, the first anniversary. I wasn't there for it. I spoke up and they said, well, if you don't like it, you can leave. So I left. And then they only had that half hour to make Untucked where they were deliberating and doing, you know, the judging mm -hmm. and figuring out who they were going to put in the bottom and stuff. So after I left and went outside, they, well, Jen, the producer, comes running back. She's like, we need you back in. We need you. Like, we, we're sorry. We're sorry. And I was like, I don't need you to be sorry. I need Stephen Korff to be sorry. Who was the one that told me I could get out? Um, so I made him step out of production and apologize to me. And then I went back in the room. I said, you don't get to treat me like that at all. And the last night at that club where we, um, where there was a little rap party, he was the one I was making out with. So we go in the bathroom, he fucks me, which was amazing, huge dick, um, <laughs> really fun. We get pulled out of the bathroom because they obviously see two feet. And then um, he, as we're being pulled out of the club too by the security, he picks up a cup and he throws it at who? Raven on stage at Mickey's. She says those two out as we are already being kicked out. So we're outside of Mickey's and at that point more people from Drag Race, more staff members, Chris McKim, the showrunner of the actual show, who's Steven's best friend too. He's um he they're all trying to like, you know, get us away from each other because we're outside and we're making out and still fucking around. About a week later, a week or couple weeks, um, the producer I fucked ended up calling me and he's like, let's go to lunch, blah, blah, blah. Like, sure, let's, whatever. He said that like, he was trying to like get me back in with WOW and all that. And like, I just, I don't really like the way, my only regret from it is I should have made him more a rubber. <laughs>
So you were being a little bad bitch. You were doing bad things on Drag Race. Yeah. So what do you <laughs> what do you think the real reason? Oh, why the you conjugal. Oh, oh, yeah. So the conjugal reason after that's what they came up with to like make sure everybody you know looks good. I wasn't trying to make them look bad, so I was like, I'll go with the story X Y Z. I knew that All Stars was coming. I wanted to play along to get on that. Um, and the conjugal was just easy because once I did tell them, oh, look, I, I had a computer and, um, you know, because I was running my little go-go boy business while yeah. I was still there. Because um, everybody everybody got to have a side hustle. I yeah. wasn't going to give that up to, you know, go play Fruit Loop on a TV show. <laughs> um, so the conjugal was the story that we all decided to go, to go with. with. Yeah. And it was easy. And it was true. Yeah. So after Drag Race, you end up releasing a song called Rupologize. Mm -hmm. And in Rupologize, you say, Then when All Star comes around, you say, Tell me I don't need it, even though I bought the gowns, bitch, wait. Were you actually called for All Stars? Yes. I was booked for All Stars. And, um,. I was trying on a gown at Siren on Sunset, or it was either Siren or Re or um, Paper Bag Princess. One of, the, one of the two places. I went to both stores. It was the second one. I don't remember which was first. But I was in the dressing room. It was latex. It was Siren. I was zipping it up and powder all over because you have to put powder on to get latex on. And Susan Haber, my manager, calls me and she says, um, they're canceling you for All Stars. And this was Friday. I was supposed to report on Sunday for All Stars in June. I had canceled all these Pride gigs the season I was on. So there were plenty of gigs. I canceled thousands of dollars worth of work, probably like at least 25, you know, to clear three, four weeks. It was a lot of money. And I was like, oh, wow. So for the next three weeks, I sit with my thumb in my ass and do nothing. I was like, this is like a loss of income. I signed my contract. I signed everything. They canceled me because the quote was, we don't see you having stakes or stories with any of the girls. And you know why? I think, um, because a month before I had just done drag you mm -hmm. and I had done drag you because one girl didn't pass her background check because they had found stuff by then. That girl that didn't pass her background check was also the one I probably would have had the most stakes with from what everybody said, Fifi. So once it was found out she couldn't do drag you, all Stars was after Drag You, so she definitely couldn't do that one. So they canceled me. Hmm. And they brought on Mimi. The feud with Rue, did that come from the All Stars and the disqualification drama? No. She doesn't give a fuck about me. And I honestly don't give a fuck about her. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't care. She doesn't know some of our names. You yeah. Know? I mean, there's videos of DragCon of her not knowing people's names. So the, Literally, at, at the reunion for... Season seven or eight, whichever one Layla was on, she calls her Lila three times. And then it's earpiece, earpiece, earpiece. Okay, we're gonna go back. And then she says Layla's introduction correctly. And she doesn't look at Layla, who's like feet away from her and say, Girl, sorry, you know, I met you once and you were on two episodes and you got kicked off. Make a joke of it. She doesn't even say that. It's like, are you you're a drag queen, and that's another queen that you just fucking insulted in front of a room full of people by not even knowing her name. And you can't be like, girl, sorry. Yeah. You know? Or make, yeah. You know what? Gratitude is not conditional, so I have nothing bad to say about the, the person. But um, there's so many better things to, uh, to wonder about than what makes her tick. Yeah. I think. You know? That's true. And I mean, you've made a name with, of yourself without her. And that's... No. I... I I, I would not be in the position I am literally across the street from the production company that makes Drag Race without RuPaul's Drag Race. So I haven't made a name without her. I went on her show to become a name. And it and kind of happened. And you've taken that, but then you've become your own self after that. Sure. Well, I was always me, but she, her show helped me become the name. More, yeah. 